please. Uh, next, next speaker, Maxim Alexandrovich Alshansky, and uh, his lecture, Numerical Analysis. Okay, uh, so uh, I will talk about, uh, yeah, I will talk about uh, modern and analysis of surface fluids. And when I was thinking about the topic uh, for this lecture, I think that uh, talking about fluids and analysis of fluids is very appropriate since it was a central topic for one of the Ladizhinska research. Uh, so uh, I will start with a very quick motivation of uh, uh, what we were doing uh, for, for several years. So uh, our models and uh, equations, system equations are motivated by applications in uh, cell biology. And uh, we, we are interested in modeling of uh, plasma membranes, which is illustrated uh, here. Well, it consists of uh, two layers of lipids. So the thickness of this membrane is just two layers of molecules. And uh, this membrane exhibits uh, uh, elasticity and fluidity. So uh, we, we can think about the membrane as a very thin, just two molecules with a sheet of fluid embedded in some uh, bulk. So um, uh, phenomena uh, happening in these membranes were uh, and still uh, are in the focus of research in cell biology and uh, in particular uh, rafts <coughs> forming in these membranes these uh, liquid uh, rafts uh, different phases uh, are interesting in cell biology so I refer to this paper in nature. <coughs> All right. Um, uh, let me uh, go to uh, modeling, and we are interested in modeling uh, lateral fluidity of a uh, very thin layer. So in uh, our approach, this uh, layer, this membrane is represented by a surface, a two-dimensional surface embedded in uh, 3D in R3. So, and this uh, surface can be time dependent and it is material surface in the sense that it supports a distribution of a density and U is a smooth density flow. Um, and then we have, uh, we can think about a classical approach of continuum mechanics and just apply first principles, first conservation laws, for example, uh, in extensibility of membrane uh, implies through this uh, uh, conservation of area for any uh, elementary uh, area <coughs> on the surface applies this divergence condition. Mass conservation says that the density along the material paths is constant. So further on, dot will be material derivative derivative along material paths, and then we apply the second Newton law for any elementary area. And uh, after using consistent relation between stress and uh, lateral uh, deformation, rate of deformation, we have this momentum equation. <coughs> uh, so uh, you see that it looks like uh, uh, momentum equation in the uh, Navier-Stokes and the classical Navier-Stokes equation, though we have some additional terms here, like this normal force, which you can think as uh, semi-analog of a surface tension force. All right, so uh, to have a, a better idea of this equation, let's take a look uh, for a moment on the case of a steady surface. So now our surface is just steady, just given surface, which means that the normal component of uh, the motion is zero. There is no uh, radial motion. 
And then uh, this uh, problem simplifies to something very uh, familiar, so to service Navier-Stokes equation. Though, so all uh, derivatives are here are tangential. So this is, for example, the covariant uh, der derivative of uh, U. This is the tangential derivative of uh, pressure. Uh, so we have, uh, but th there is still uh, some uh, subtle difference uh, when uh, we try to compare uh, things on manifolds and uh, things uh, uh, in R. And uh, for example, if we think, if we look in, into the, this viscosity term, then this is the proper viscosity term. So we have the rate of the in-plane rate of deformation tensor, in-plane divergence, and the projection of the result on the tangential plane. And uh, in our end, this all this analog of this is equivalent to the Laplacian for divergence free function or to such a presentation, but this is not the case in uh, on the manifold. So all these uh, quantities which are analogs of this uh, Rn <coughs> operators are different. They <coughs> differ up to uh, uh, a Ricci tensor scaled by uh, some constant. So, and that is why in the literature, actually you can find a different uh, surface Navier-Stokes Navier equations, even on the steady surfaces, depending on what kind of the diffusion people consider. So from the mechanical point of view, this is the right surface diffusion tensor here. All right, so uh, talking about the, the history of, uh, of this subject, this is a very classical, uh, subject in uh, analysis and uh, it can be traced back at least to the work of uh, Arnold uh, where he uh, related uh, early equation manifolds with the geodesics on the group of volume preserving diffeomorphism and uh, further that was uh, extended by Eben and Marsden to, to show well poseness of uh, Navier-Stokes equation on manifolds. And the analysis of uh, these equations are still uh, a topic of account research. Uh, I refer to the uh, recent uh, work by Simone and uh, co authors. Well, and uh, before I move further, uh, talking about uh, case of unsteady surfaces, and maybe I will talk a little bit about numerical methods if I have time. I want uh, to run one example of a flow uh, computed uh, on a surface to show how actually the curvature and maybe topology influences the, uh, the evolution of the flow. So uh, here, a very classical uh, setup like Kellen Hempholz, uh, flow or can impose uh, instability. So for example, on the sphere, the setup is the following. Uh, on the node hemisphere, the flow initially is rotating counterclockwise and in the south hemisphere, it's uh, clockwise rotation. And then we have a, 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 a layer in between these uh, rotating flows. And if we uh, have some perturbation of the layer, we have the tissue production and then where you, you will see vortices forming and how these vortices uh, interact. So this is a very <coughs> uh, classical thing. And uh, the same setup is on the torus. So uh, we have initially the flow rotating like this and uh, clockwise on the other side of the torus. And Okay, and then uh, we run our simulation from here and let's see uh, what happening. Okay, let me try to run, okay. Do you see my animation? Yeah, I hopefully yeah, you can see it. If you don't, just let me know. So uh, initially you see this, uh, the formation of vortices, both on the sphere and uh, on the torus and the classical uh, uh, evolution and the, the classical picture which many people observe when they model this uh, in a plane. Then further, uh, we have the pairing of vortices 
of these vortices and then the pairing of uh, larger vortices. And you will see that this is what happens initially. So you see that these vortices start to interact like here, they pair in here, and they are also pairing on the sphere. So, and then in the plane, you will see these two uh, vortices pairing this large, and this is what is happening uh, on the sphere as well. So this flow pretty much resembles what is happening in the plane. So, but on the torus, now let's see, now this vortex try to pair with the vortex over there, but it does not happen. They uh, repel. So, and we again have four vortices, one, two, three, four. Here on the sphere, we have two vortices and they will uh, decay. Nothing will happen anymore. Now here, one more attempt for vortices to pair. Here we go. But what's happening now that we are losing any symmetry in this flow, so it becomes more chaotic. So it looks, it looks like we are passing some bifurcation point here. So uh, pretty much different behavior for a long-term run. And this is the effect of uh, probably the uh, different topology and curvature. Also, the curvature plays a role uh, for this uh, simulation. All right. Um, so let me uh, move further. OK, now I'm moving back to the uh, case of uh, the deforming membrane of the deforming surface. So now my gamma depends on time again, and this is the full model. So you see here that the, in this model, the, uh, the motion, the deformation of uh, uh, the surface that are coupled to uh, the fluid. So this is the normal velocity of, uh, this, uh, of the surface, and this is the normal component of the fluid. And uh, this is the uh, full model. And uh, this model was uh, deduced uh, uh, rather recently. There are several works on this by Koba and co-authors. I was involved on one of these papers at uh, Miura. And uh, uh, these people applied very different methods. For, for example, Koba and Giga, they applied some energetic principles we went from this continuum mechanics considerations, as I explained briefly, Miura considered a very thin layer of three-dimensional fluids and then passed to the limit. And they all ended up with the uh, such a system. So uh, currently this is considered like an established model <clears throat> for the uh, deformed fluidic layers. But uh, there is no analysis so far. Uh, as far as I know, and uh, as a consequence, there is no numerical analysis as well. Uh, that is why uh, we were interested in moving a little bit further in this direction of uh, doing on understanding this uh, full model, and uh, maybe in uh, doing some analysis in uh, some uh, simplified cases but not on a steady surface because on the steady surface, Navier-Stokes equations are now uh, very well understood from the analysis point of view. And uh, an intermediate, but still very simplified problem was the, prob uh, the, the problem when the flow is computed on the given uh, uh, time dependent surface. So the evolution of the surface is given and then uh, we uh, compute uh, equations on uh, this equation. So there is only one way coupling in this problem. So the evolution of the surface in this uh, uh, approach is independent on the tangential flow on the surface. So uh, we essentially go back, uh, what we did, we essentially uh, go back to this full model 
So, and we assume that the normal component, this normal component of this U is given, and then we are looking for the equation for the tangential component. So by also projecting this uh, momentum equation on the uh, tangential bundle uh, of our uh, evolving surface. And this is the equation uh, that we are getting. So we are picking some uh, right-hand side terms here, which depends on the curvature and uh, on the uh, normal uh, velocity of uh, the fluid. So some new terms here is this term, which depends on the curvature. So H capital is the second, uh, is the tensor of the second fundamental form. <clears throat> and uh, this is new notion of D uh, naught is the uh, derivative along the normal path on the surface. So, so it's like the uh, advection derived from material derivative, but not really the material, but only on along the normal uh, paths of uh, the points on the surface. So Sorry, what, is, uh, what is B in the previous equation? What is B in the previous equation? B? Yes. This B? Yes. Okay, uh, this B can be either some uh, given forces, like, uh, like uh, for example, you can think about some uh, shear forces uh, applied from the bulk fluid, assume they know them, or in the more complete model, which I'm not necessarily here, uh, this can be some elastic forces uh, coming from uh, the curvature. For example, uh, the work mm -hmm. of the banding energy. Uh, and given vector function, okay. Yeah, but in this talk, this is just a given uh, vector function, yes. Thank you. Sure, thank you. So, uh, and now my given vector function is F here, uh, instead of B for whatever reason. All right, so, uh, and uh, for us, it is natural to uh, consider this equation as a system given uh, post on the space time manifold. So you, we just, our surface evolves and this defines uh, a manifold embedded in R4. All right, and uh, after a proper definition of uh, spaces on uh, this uh, manifold, for example, V, is uh, the uh, space of all tangential flows uh, on uh, gamma t, which is divergence free, and LV is the uh, analog of this uh, L2 H1 space. Uh, and then, uh, so the anal some analog of this uh, main Boschner space for the analysis of the 2D uh, uh, Nyestok's uh, equation in, in, in. Uh, And uh, then uh, we prove the uh, global existence of a unique solution to this problem in uh, this space and such that the normal derivatives are in uh, the adjoint space, so which is Simon Alec of the L2H minus one space. And we prove that pressure is an L2 on S. So this is as far as we were able to go uh, with analysis of uh, fluid systems on uh, time dependent uh, surfaces. All right, so uh, maybe a, a, a better insight uh, now some inside at least uh, can be gained if we consider uh, energy balance for smooth solutions to, to the system. So which we just uh, uh, obtain in a usual way, uh, multiplying by U, uh, integrating over surface. And then uh, it looks pretty familiar. We have a variation of the kinetic energy, viscous dissipation, works of external forces, but also we're picking uh, one more term, which you don't see in a uh, equation in a plane or on a steady surface, because this Wn 
is the normal motion of, of the surface. So if the manifold is steady, so if the surface is steady, this is just vanishing. And here we have uh, the shape operator. And uh, this can be interpreted as a production or otherwise a destruction of energy, depending on uh, how our uh, flow is uh, on the surface is aligned with the principal directions uh, on the surface. And if our uh, surface uh, is uh, expanding or shrinking, uh, if we uh, view it from uh, uh, from the normal. All right, so yeah, so this is term yet to, to, to be better understood, I think. Um, uh, I, I would like to show one uh, numerical example of how uh, the fluid, uh, a flow on uh, uh, deforming a uh, surface uh, looks like probably this is something not you see too often so uh <clears throat> our setup uh, is the following so we have a a perturbed sphere so we have a sphere perturbed by uh, several uh, spherical harmonic with time dependent coefficients so our sphere start oscillates in some not very symmetric uh, not actual symmetric uh, oscillations here <clears throat> And these oscillations uh, produce some flow. So F is uh, external forces are zero, but uh, there are G which depends on, uh, on this motion and uh, the curvature. So there is a uh, sink or source flow which depends on the curvature and uh, the motion. Uh, okay, let me run. Uh, Okay, here we go. So you see that the Reynolds number is pretty high, but we don't see any, you know, uh, too much uh, vorticity production. Let me run it one, one more time. We don't see too much vorticity production. It's really a flow dominating by uh, source and, and sink, and uh, we have a pretty fast destruction of the energy of the slow, let's say. All right. Um, so let me see how much time I have. Uh, maybe another five minutes. Uh, so uh, let me just spend maybe five minutes to explain uh, how we compute uh, uh, this flows, what kind of uh, numerical methods we apply. So we apply find element methods which are based on the embedding of our surface in a bulk given mesh. And the uh, idea of uh, this method is to take uh, piecewise, uh, piecewise polynomial functions which are continuous on a tetrahedral mesh cut by the surface and then take the traces or restrictions of these uh, functions on the surface, which may move in uh, the bulk mesh. And then this uh, uh, space of traces uh, will be our main uh, test and trial space in the uh, weak form of uh, the problem, like in this uh, laplace beltrami uh, equation. So we just have a weak form of the equation and we take the space of traces. So in the essence, this is the uh, idea how we apply <coughs> our fine element methods. Of course, there are uh, many details, in particular how we treat the evolution, the material derivatives. We can do this in a space-time manner. This is not what we do. Instead, we do this uh, using uh, Finite differences uh, in time, uh, like illustrated here. But again, this is a delicate thing when uh, the surface is not steady because this u n minus one is not properly defined on gamma n uh, by default. So it's defined on gamma gamma n minus one. So uh, we have to do something to to make this term. Uh, 
uh, well defined. So that is why we are looking uh, for the solution together with its, its extension to the neighborhood of the surface each time. And if we do this, then on the next time uh, step, UN will be properly defined on gamma n plus one. And this is how we go from uh, one time to another time. And there is some analysis of this method but not for the Navier-Stokes equations yet, but for the uh, advection diffusive equations on uh, deforming surfaces. So this is uh, the idea of the method. Then when it comes to fluid, the, there are some uh, extra uh, difficulty, in particular how uh, we handle uh, a tangential condition on, uh, uh, on the surfaces, uh, this is not easy to enforce for piecewise polynomial functions uh, point-wise. So we go uh, for the weak enforcement. Then uh, numerical analog of, then pressure stability is uh, a, 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 another uh, issue, another challenge which has to be addressed. And uh, uh, it's possible to uh, prove uh, discrete analog of the fundamental results of the nature and Bogovsky that uh, this uh, gradient has a, uh, has a close range as an operate from L2 to uh, H minus one. And this is how the analog looks like uh, for uh, fine elements functions. You see that we have some uh, extra terms for the uh, normal derivative of the pressure in, in, in a layer, in this gray layer uh, around the surface, and this term can be avoided. So uh, something to, to have this uh, appears in the weak formulation, in the fine element formulation of uh, the problem. And when we put everything together, then the analysis goes through, and at least for the Stokes problem or the steady surfaces, this is as far as we are able to go at this point with analysis, we have optimal error estimate for, <clears throat> uh, for the trace uh, telehood elements. And here, uh, a couple of more examples of uh, surface flows. Uh, maybe let me show uh, uh, this example because it's pretty interesting. This is something you don't see uh, uh, in, a, in RN when you compute a flow in a volume or in a, a bounded area with digitally boundary condition. So we start here uh, with some arbitrary flow. Let me run it one more time. So we start with some uh, uh, flow, a more or less arbitrary flow or smooth flow on a sphere and we let it uh, relax. So now the sphere is steady and we let it relax to its uh, equilibrium. And uh, usually, uh, usually you must have a zero equilibrium uh, if you solve this uh, problem uh, in a volume with some Dirichlet boundary condition, uh, zero Dirichlet boundary condition without any uh, source term. But here on the surface, this is not necessarily the case if uh, the surface uh, supports uh, killing vector fields, which means uh, for a closed uh, R2 surface that we, we have some rigid rotations, some rigid motions, uh, which uh, keep our surface the same. And uh, these killing vector fields are, are equilibrium flows on uh, this surface. So I think I'm coming to the very end. Let me uh, skip some slides. Okay. So uh, when it comes to more complicated models, let me just uh, say a few words here. When it comes to more realistic models of uh, uh, lipid membranes, uh, we have multi-component uh, membranes and uh, we are interested in the pattern formations. Uh, on these membranes, and then we uh, couple uh, our fluid model with, uh, in this case, uh, Kahn-Hillard model uh, with some thermodynamic uh, 
uh, model. So we have uh, more equations uh, uh, in our system and uh, that what we able to solve on the steady surfaces so far. I will skip the tails here. All right, this is some comparison. Okay, I think my time ran out. So uh, thank you very much for staying uh, for this talk and okay, preprints, papers on the site, more animations are collected uh, on YouTube. So you can go there anytime and uh, check them out. Thank you. Uh, all right, so thank you. Okay. Uh, me, question, please. Let me see if I can see you. Uh, <coughs> uh, so when you showed your uh, uh, animations, uh, uh, I expected that uh, at some moment uh, the surface will change its topology. So in the uh, applications, is it possible? So uh, certainly it's possible in applications, but we are not that far uh, with modeling it. So uh, in our, okay, let me go uh, to my example with the moving, uh, with the pres prescribe uh, this deformant. So at this point, we are just prescribe uh, the motion of the surface. So we just prescribe it you know, smooth and given without any top topological changes. Okay, it's it's uh, it's a very good question. How, what kind of flow uh, will be uh, induced if uh, the surface changes its topology, which is a very plausible situation in practice? Uh, we were not there yet. We, 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 we never tried to compute. It. And uh, as you can imagine, analysis of this uh, could be very challenging. Yes, I see. Thank you. And uh, what about if, if the topology doesn't change, what about uh, considering the pullback uh, on the fixed surface uh -huh, uh -huh, and uh -huh. pull, pull back equations and uh, to consider a fixed surface? Yeah, uh, uh, the, the, this is the definitely a uh, uh, possible approach. And if, in, in fact, when, when you are doing analysis, the, this is how you uh, analyze the property of all the spaces on space-time manifold. You assume that there is implicitly some uh, uh, pullback map on the uh, uh, reference domain. So uh, it's definitely, an, so you can pull back, uh, you, you may have some uh, yeah, very nonlinear problem on the reference manifold and you can solve it there. So we're not doing that because uh, our goal is to be able to compute uh, equations on uh, uh, surfaces with uh, of complex, very complex shape and very uh, big deformations, including the change of the topology. And actually, uh, we are computing, uh, for example, advection diffusion or phase separation concealed models on uh, faces with the topological changes. I'm not showing this uh, in this presentation, but if you're interested, you can check it uh, on, uh, in our collection of uh, animations. Uh, but we are not computing flows yet on uh, this case of topological changes, but this will be at some point the goal. So that's why uh, such an approach. I, I had exactly the same uh, questions. Why not uh, coming to a, a fixed uh, 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 configuration? And uh, my question is, uh, how do you know that your code is correct? Because uh, it's very difficult. I mean, I'm very impressed. Uh, but uh, you probably you should have the code also written by pulling back to a fixed uh, geometry to check the your uh, to check your your results, don't you? Uh, okay. So uh, your question is the same. My answer is partially the same. So that the goal is to compute on 
on uh, surfaces, including the case of topological changes. And we are doing this for different equations, not for fluid equations yet. Regarding the uh, reliability of the code, I'm not showing this here. Okay, okay, here we go. But on steady surfaces, uh, we have error analysis and we have uh, uh, simulations uh, uh, with, with, with this code where we see these predicted uh, convergence rates. So we're sure that at least on steady surfaces, our uh, fluid equations are good. So uh, that the implementation is correct. And on unsteady surfaces, we, uh, we have uh, analysis or not for fluids, but for advection diffusion equations. So there is no pressure, no divergence condition here, of course. But we have analysis for this equation and we also have uh, verified convergence rates. Uh, okay, thanks. Okay, for fluid Great. equations, for fluid equations on evolving surfaces, we are currently working on uh, the paper. So, uh, one of the students is doing also this convergence test. So, that's that's the work in the progress. Mm -hmm. Okay, Andrei Strucker, you can ask your question. Thank you. Uh, great presentation. My question partly relates to previous two ones. Uh, you showed example of a sphere with perturbations, and you also discussed evolving surfaces. Mm -hmm. The method also can be used to study any type of perturbation in the model, in the surface that you would include. Say, small perturbations, any type of perturbations. Uh, and the question is? Um, is it possible to study any type of perturbations, say perturbations in a surface or any other uh, element? Yeah, yeah we, we, right. So we can perturb the surface, but if, so uh, the, 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 the question is, uh, the, the short an answer is yes, the, the, the method is suitable for computing this, but the question is what what you want to compute for example so uh, currently uh, we have one way coupling so we have uh, perturbations or deformation of the surface given so for all times so it's not like we perturb the surface and let this perturbation to evolve so this is not yet implemented Okay. So that that that, that, that would, would be very uh, interesting, but in this for, for, for this kind of simulations, we need two-way couplets. So the perturbation affects the flow, and the flow affects the the, the, the evolution of uh, this uh, the surface of the perturbation. Then I think that's a very interesting setup, but we are not there yet. To, okay. This is not Thanks. Thanks. More than enough. Thanks. Are there any questions, please? Uh, may I ask a question about the uh, dissipation? What you can tell about the dissipativity of the system uh, depending on the character of the surface? Uh, that, that's an excellent question, but I afraid I, uh, let, let me go back. Actually, from the ener energy quality, it doesn't follow that the system is dissipative in general. So, uh, if the okay, if the surface is steady, if the surface yeah. is steady, then uh, this goes away, right? Then this is zero, mm -hmm. and, and then uh, the the system is dissipative. So the the, the curvature is of course uh, is hidden here in this uh, in plane. Uh, uh, rate of deformation tensor. And then the question is how, uh, say, the uh, Friedrichs constant depends on, uh, on the curvature, which would uh, give you some bounds for the energy decay. Frankly speaking, I don't know. <laughs> so, okay, thank you. Thank you very uh, much. Yeah, probably it's uh, an interesting question to look in, but 
uh, on top of my head, I don't know of any papers. There could be papers on that, but uh, I don't know. Thanks. Thank you. Sure. If uh, there are no questions, yes. Uh, please, uh, thanks, uh, uh, speaker. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much.